Hi there and welcome to Whoops Easy Mind Easy Life. <laughs> I was just sitting here for a bit waiting for inspiration as I got to the end of the last conversations. Um I just there was a lull. There was something that wanted to come in. And then it just did. So the question I pose to you in this video is what do you need to be happy? What do you really, really need in your heart? Right now, this very moment, what do you need to be happy? Have you ever stopped to ask yourself that? Hmm, it's an interesting question, isn't it? Because we go through life doing this and doing that, and pursuing this and pursuing that, and following this and following that. Because we believe that that will lead us to our happiness. That will make us happy. Otherwise, there would be no point uh, of doing anything, really. If the belief behind it is not that it will eventually make you happy, <laughs> what's the point of doing anything? Have you ever stopped to think about that? Why do anything if it's not because it's going to make you happy? Or if you believe that it's going to make you happy? What would be the point of doing it? You know, you, we go to these jobs, we work nine to five. We come home, we've barely got anything left to make dinner, you know, to be with our family. But we hope at the end of it, that we can maybe have a holiday here or there with our family and you know, enjoy that quality time together and have some happy memories, some happiness along the way. There's always a goal to everything that we do. In the background, it's we hope that it's going to make us happy. Otherwise, what's the point? What's the point? Remember, I'm here with these videos to really push you out of your box. And today may be that day you sit there and you go, what do I need to make me happy? What do you need? Have you ever, ever asked yourself, what do you want? What is it that you're chasing that's going to make you happy? Or what is the belief that you are holding on to at the moment? That when you get to that, then you'll be happy. When you achieve that, then you'll be happy. It just came to me as I did the last video and I was remembering the beautiful house we lived in when I grew up. And you would think that if chasing material things was the answer, we had everything. We had everything to be happy. Everything materially that you could possibly want as a child growing up everything but that wasn't the case not for my parents and not for me at that point in time I was 14 14 at 14 um, I went to a an Estedford a competition for piano and I remember we were all playing at that time we all used to play the same piece and there were about 30 of us, at, uh, you know, on that day in that competition playing the same piece. And I was smack in the middle. I was like number 14, right, out of the 30 odd students that were playing. And I remember um, listening to the first one and thinking, oh, she's got the rhythm all wrong. And then listening to the second one and she's got the rhythm all wrong. But by the fourth and the fifth, they were all playing at the same. I was the only one that was playing it different. And I looked down at my music and I started to really stress that I was the one that had the rhythm all wrong, you know? And uh, it ended up in disaster. I don't even remember what I played. I just remember that my hands were so sweaty um, that they kept slipping off the keys because of all the sweat pouring off my hands. I was covered in sweat from the stress of having to play knowing it was all wrong and so <laughs> we got to it's funny 
My dad had had a heart attack. My mum's back was stuffed, right? That she could hardly walk. And I had carpal tunnel syndrome in both of my hands at the end of that year. I was so freaked out by that competition that I couldn't play. I was so afraid to play after that because I wasn't prepared properly. You know, it didn't occur to me at any time that it wasn't my fault. It was my teacher that didn't teach me properly <laughs> because I didn't go there of my own accord. I had a teacher that prepared me and signed me up for that competition. And then I had to go through all of that. You know, that I was the only one that wasn't playing it properly. The notes were good. It's just the rhythm was all out of whack. So by the end of that year, um, I, it, every time I sat at the piano, I was so stiff, my fingers were so rigid that I had created this whole <laughs> problem in my wrists. And it got to a point where I couldn't write at school. I couldn't even brush my hair if they just hurt so bad. Um, and that was about eight months after that at Stedford. Uh, I was so stressed out. And uh, I'd forgotten about that, you know, until I started writing Your Past is a Gift, I had completely blocked out that event. I was uh, so traumatized by it, you know, at the time, you know, you're this little 14 year old, you know, going in and there were much younger kids. I think the one that won that, that part of the competition, I think she was like nine years old or something like that. Um, but it wasn't so much that I wasn't fussed about the age difference. I, I didn't really care that I was older and that she was younger or I didn't have any of that going on in my mind. Um, what I did have going on was that mine was wrong, you know, and at that point in my life, because of all the events I'd gone through before that, things always had to be perfect. So for me to get there that day and my song so, was so out of sync with everyone else's and I'm sure to the you know examiners or whatever you want to call them the guys that were listening and marking our work you know and then deciding who was going to win and all that because there was a, a table of um, adjudicators or whatever they're called you know the people that um, judge you and then they all decide there was three of them at a table and the three of them decide you know who gets you know first second and third was the idea and then some of us got I even got a little medal you know, a merit award, <laughs> um, which not everybody did. They gave you a, a score out of a hundred in those days, right? And I actually made enough points to get a merit award. But for them, it must have been so fresh because it was different to everyone else's, you know? <laughs> I didn't think about any of that. You know, I was just so freaked out that mine was wrong. And it's their experiences, you know, that are there for a reason. Um, from that experience, I learnt the power that we have over our bodies because it took me a really long time to realise that the carpal tunnel syndrome that I had in my arms, my, my wrists, I had created that mentally. I was so scared of going through that ever again that I made myself sick. I, I never wanted to go through that ever again. To me, that was the most humiliating thing that had happened to me up until that point in time. You know, I was shattered. I was absolutely shattered that day. And, um, yeah, so it's just incredible looking back on it now that in my mind, I was so terrified that I made myself sick, you know, to the point where I just couldn't play. I couldn't play. As much as I loved playing, I couldn't play because it started to hurt so badly after, you know, the tension in my, my fingers and my wrists and I just couldn't, couldn't be on the piano. So, yeah, and we had everything, you know? We had everything. Like I said, my parents were even paying for me to go to a private school that was quite expensive in those days as well. We had everything. And uh, we were all falling apart in our own ways. <laughs> You know, I look back on it and I think, what a funny time. It just doesn't mean anything to have all that stuff. It's all outside of us. And like I said before, if all this stuff, the house, the cars, the, the, all of it, if it meant anything, 
we would be allowed to take it with us when we go. We would take it with us if it had any value, if it meant anything, but it doesn't because that's not what we're here for. Or, you know, maybe have the experiences to understand that, oh, that's not what we're looking for. You know, we collect all these things and we gather all these things and come to the end of the day, you realize, oh, it doesn't mean anything. That's not what my soul is yearning for. like and subscribe so you don't miss any of the messages and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.